<laughs> so Jamie, who are you? Yeah, so I'm Jamie. Um, I live in Barcelona, but I'm from New York. I'm a musical stand-up comedian. That's it. That's me. I don't know. How did you end up in Barcelona? Um, I... Um, so yeah, I, I first moved to Barcelona to teach English, um, and then, and that was after uni, basically I had four years of uni, um, none of my friends wanted to live with me, they thought I would be bad to live with, which is not true, I'm an amazing roommate, but, um, so that happened, and then I was like, well, I'll just fuck off to, can I curse? Of course. Oh, great. <laughs> we talk a lot. Perfect. Sophia talk a lot of pedophilia stuff. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> okay, we can get more into pedophilia yeah, if you yeah. want. Um, but yeah, so I was like, oh, I'll just fuck off to Barcelona while my friends stay in stupid New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I loved it, loved it so much. Um, but I, I, my visa ended, had to go back to the States, worked as a bartender for a few years, did some more comedy, and then finally saved up, moved back to Barcelona. That's where I live now. So you have a long history with Barcelona. I do, yeah. Did you learn the language? Kind of. <laughs> That's such yeah. an American thing. Yeah. I know, it's hard. It's hard, I'm trying. Uh -huh. But everyone always speaks English back to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Except the only places that don't speak English are the ones that you really need. It's the doctor, the uh -huh. bank, and the, the police. Uh -huh. They don't speak English. Everyone else does. Uh -huh. So like, I can order a coffee in Spanish, but the... But then I have to go to the gynecologist and try and understand what she's saying to me. I, I think like Barcelona is really similar to Berlin. Probably. Yeah. Uh, Berlin is less tourist, but there's more expat yeah. community live there, work there. Right. Um, and it's really, really hard to learn the language. Yeah. Do you speak any German? Uh, I am in, in Germany for, for almost 10 years now. Yeah. I just got the language down. But by down, I mean get all the level, uh, levels down, all the course down. Yeah. But uh, that's different than speaking in real life. Exactly. I did some German comedy shows, people can understand me. Oh, that's But nice. uh, when the whole sound stage, I understood shit. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's really hard and it's, yeah. it's a multi-year battle. Um, I think the main main obstacle is that it, we don't have a language in one if, yeah. if I start to fuck a German guy maybe but, uh, but uh, no yeah are you learning Romanian? yeah 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 <laughs> my, my, my boy is Romanian yeah so you can just learn Romanian <laughs> sure who wants to learn Romanian? I know right? <laughs> they all speak French anyway right? I don't think so Wait, does he not speak French? no he needs to learn <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm yeah. fine. I, I mean, you already speak Chinese and English. Yeah, but but still, that's not mean, an excuse to not learn the local language. Yeah, I, I feel it's like a, uh, I joke a lot about how rude German is, uh, but uh, yeah, they are rude. They but, are. Uh, well, they're honest. Like, yeah, they yeah, yeah. They don't they, have any layers of irony. Yeah, it's not like, like they are. Mean person or something. Yeah. Some of them are, but uh, I, I. There were a lot of mean ones back in the forties. Yeah, yeah. I, I love, <laughs> I love the country. I, I, it gave me so much, and I think Germans they are a little bit like me. Yeah. Like rude on the outside, but right? <laughs> they are actually nice people. Yeah. And uh, um, I, I think like, uh, it's really like I, I, I think experts really need to, um, learn the language. And, and I, I feel like kind of the locals, if, if you don't speak the language, you can't really complain like you yeah. get a different treatment. It's, it's just different. You need to communicate. I'm not um, like other, some other American Jewish woman from <laughs> New York. Not me. It's and, not me. Uh, whose name starts with an S. <laughs> uh, complain Germans are so rude and they don't speak English. I'm not like that. I blame myself. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I agree. I think it's like I want to speak Spanish. Like mm -hmm. I moved there so that I would speak multiple languages. Uh -huh. And they speak Spanish and they speak Catalan. Uh -huh. And I can speak enough. Like I get by. I would pass the citizenship test if I had to take it. Mm -hmm. But I just. Like no one wants to. No one speaks it. Like yeah. I'll go to order a coffee and then someone will say. Oh, here he uh, here's the coffee in a German accent uh, in Barcelona. German like, accent? Yeah, there's a lot of Germans living in Barcelona. Oh wow! 
Um, have you thought about move to other uh, Spain, Spanish city for a while to just get it? Back? It would be a good idea. Like if yeah. I went for like three months to like Valencia or something, mm -hmm. I could probably. I'd and also, Spanish. there's more motivation to learn Spanish because it's a more widely speak language. Yeah. And it's more sexy. That's true. I like German. <laughs> That's true. Espanol is muy caliente. Yeah. You probably can get it later more. Yeah, a little. <laughs> I do, you know, it's fun. I don't know if this happens to you, but when I'm flyering people in Edinburgh, sometimes, actually today, there was a couple from Tenerife, or Tenerife, um, and I was like, oh, vivo in Barcelona, and then I talked to them in Spanish, and I get really impressed. <laughs> no cultural. Yesterday, I ran into some German folks. I yeah. said a few sentences, and they walk away. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. the most German shit ever, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, do you speak Z language? I can't do I can't do accents. <laughs> me neither, me neither. So, yeah. um, uh, back to the main topic. What issue do you have? <laughs> <laughs> what are your problems? Yeah. So, is this therapy? Do I get? Are you therapizing me? Yeah, are you paying me? <laughs> Depends on. <laughs> I'll pay you a lot. Of laughter. course, you won't pay me. I'm um, a woman. <laughs> But just only 70 cents to the dollar, you know. <laughs> um, my issues, I so I'm pretty sure that all my issues stemmed from undiagnosed ADHD, mm -hmm. which is very common in the ADHD community because none of us have time to go get diagnosed. Uh -huh. Um, so I've been like kind of like I've had a lot of therapy. Uh, my early therapist said that I just feel big feelings a lot. And I was like, am I bipolar? And they're like, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I think you just feel big feelings. Um, and so I eventually got a psychiatrist. And he gave me Lexapro as like a first try, which is a, it's an SSRI. Okay, um, that, that's antidepressant. Antidepressant. What? Um, he just, I told him what my sort of day-to-day -day was. I was dealing with uh, crying a lot during, it was covid and anytime I had my PMS, like before my period, I'd get extremely, extremely emotional and just like break down crying. And I had to call out of work one day because I just couldn't stop crying. And I was like, I don't know why. So I told the psychiatrist this and he said, let's just get you on a baseline antidepressant. And how old were you? This was, I must have been 27 or 28. Must have and been how old are you now? And now I'm 31. So it's like four years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Three to four years. Yeah. Um, yeah, about four years ago, actually, yeah, 2020, fall 2020, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and I've been taking it ever since. I don't think it's perfect. It helps just kind of, he said it'll help quiet things. Like, I have a lot of anxiety, mm -hmm. and it all, it all kind of, like, rolls together and manifests as, like, anxiety, depression, ADHD, and it becomes this cycle where it's like, I have a lot of thoughts. Sometimes those thoughts are bad. That causes depression, right? Um, and so it's actually... What I'm learning, probably the ADHD causing a lot of thoughts, but in that way it can masquerade as either anxiety or, or depression, and so the Lexapro kind of helps the symptom, but not the cause. So it, it helps, but I still have, I, I need to go, I'm, I'm planning to go when I'm back in Barcelona. But how do you know you have an undiagnosed ADHD? Um, I have basically every symptom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, Since when you start to suspect? Uh, few, a few years, yeah, <laughs> the TikTok thing. No, really, I, you go to phone No, I, I hate TikTok. I don't yeah, use me, it. I also don't use it. Yeah, because it, it makes me like, why don't you use it? <laughs> <laughs> I, I forget, I forget about government stuff. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, I, I'm not a TikToker. Um, mm -hmm. I am an Instagrammer though, so mm -hmm. I will scroll on the reels all day long. But I've known for a while. Like my mom, uh, when I was younger, used to think I had it. Um, but I have the sort where they'll say like the gifted child sort mm -hmm. of, you know, perfectionist girl, gifted child um, who does well in school and all of that, mat, you know, and is able to sort of mask any sort of issues. And then you get older and it all starts coming out and it like floods out. One of my best friends was diagnosed and she was like, Jane, you have to go. We grew up together. Mm -hmm. um, and basically I'm very bad at time management. Okay. So that's like the biggest thing is I'm late all the time and I'll mm -hmm. tell people, I'll be like, 
I'm really working on it. I'm really working on it. I've had friends get mad at me and I'm like, I can't, I don't know how to better control this, uh -huh. but I've tried so hard. I get really bad like morning anxiety, which, which, uh, has been connected to ADHD, just trouble getting out of bed and being a night person. Mm -hmm. Um, and like when you stay up late, mm -hmm. uh, and then I don't know, there's, there's a lot of other stuff. Um, over emotional is a big, a big thing, like hard, difficulty regulating emotion. But the diagnosis one hand, have you, besides the diagnosis, have you tried to learn how to cope with it? Yeah. Yeah, I'm figuring out ways like um I'm in a I'm in a WhatsApp group of girls with ADHD. Mm -hmm. About half of them are not diagnosed either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um and we all will be like someone will be like, Oh, like this this thing that like I the other day was like I'm really mm -hmm. having trouble getting out of bed. I can't mm -hmm. force myself out of bed because I am my own boss, mm -hmm. which means I have to self motivate. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really difficult for me. And so um I, I asked the group, I was like, what do you guys do? And everyone was like, it's really difficult for me. The way I cope is I get to bed by this time. I do all my morning routine stuff. But then they also had some interesting stuff, like playing music in the morning, Ugh. singing to yourself when you wake up. I, like, I, I think like just by looking at you, I can give you a few suggestions. I, I was undiagnosed, but I was diagnosed last year. Oh, nice. Um, and... Uh, I think the most important thing I learned is always know the time. Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't know that I never had a watch growing up. Like, a, um, like a, I tr my mom bought me a watch, but they were made in China. They stopped working after a few weeks. So uh, nothing really sticked. Um, and then, <laughs> See, to me, that's the opposite of Chinese mm -hmm. people who work really well all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, with the... Then I figure out the Fitbit, yeah. and then when you have, which is really works for me because I can't have a normal watch. Normal watch, you need to put it down when you shower, then I forgot to put it down, then everything collapsed. I forgot uh, my watch. Uh, for, for reference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I learned is like, uh, uh, now at home, I have so many clocks. I have, uh, uh, I have two, uh, I have, uh, I have, Two in my living room, one also in my living room, but in my work section. Nice. And I have my watch in my bed. I need to know time all the time because mm -hmm. I, I know sometimes, like for example, I forgot to charge my watch and yeah. I don't put it up immediately. And then in my brain, I was like, I probably already fucked up something. <laughs> it's uh, probably already late for something. Then the anxiety may make me want to avoid it. Yeah. So I would just deliberately just fuck it. I will not check the time. Right. And the, but the, the anxiety is building up something. I know something will come up. Yeah. But I just don't want to face it. Then everything will collapse. Exactly. Uh, it feels like everything is going to collapse all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is... But I... Sometimes I won't wear my watch because mm. I'll be like, I don't like to be burdened by time <laughs> like, <laughs> because it makes me feel anxious because really? I know I'm late and I'm like, I feel mm. bad and guilty. And then it just for, for me, uh, not knowing the time you will really will send me to oh, a yeah, it's worse. spiral. Um, it's definitely worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, <laughs> and then with uh, meeting up people, I learned a trick uh, and uh, what I do is when I meet with people, I always ask them to meet me at my home. Oh, and uh, and uh, uh, and for example, there's a friend of mine. He come to my home. He was complaining about another friend always late. Once I asked him to wait for thirty minutes, he's so angry. I was like, Why are you so angry? You wait for me all the time. Yeah. He said, I never wait for you. I'm like, you are waiting for me now. <laughs> and re turns out he doesn't realize because every time I set the meeting place and my place, right. and as soon as he sit down, I start to give him tea. Right. I start to give him food and I start That's to do my thing and uh, keep him like uh, keep him, give him uh, like a PlayStation to play or something. And he doesn't know he's waiting for me, but I'm getting ready. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> That's brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I kind of did that. I had a roommate though recently who um, who I love, but was like, I need a heads up if someone's gonna come over. Mm -hmm. And so eventually, I, I live in my own place now, and I'm like, this is really helpful. I didn't realize I did this, but subconsciously, I do that a lot. I'll mm -hmm. be like, hey, we need to, 
uh, go to this place, why don't you just meet me at mine? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, I didn't do it on purpose. Yeah, know? I mean, especially if you have tea and, uh, and snacks, yeah, they just don't realize, water. they just don't understand, they don't re realize what's going on. Exactly. And I've been doing that trick on him for years, he has yeah. no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes he'll wait for an hour, he, he didn't know he's waiting. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. best. <laughs> that's how you do it. We um, just, that's what ADHD people do, is we just trick other people. Yeah, like... <laughs> It's, I, I think it was ADHD, like, uh, I, I really, I like, I'm really a big fan of audio books. Yeah. So I, I'm not that big fan of podcasts because for me, I it's start hard to focus on it. No, I feel That's podcast hard. is like, podcast is like conversation. Yeah. And there's lots of mistakes in it and whatever. I don't really have the time to, to. I like that you're saying that while we're, we're recording a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean to learn things, but yeah. if I want to just know someone's opinion, it's fine. But for example, if I want to learn how to cope with uh, ADHD, I would rather to listen to an audiobook first. That's so smart. Because I know it's an audiobook, it's a best-selling, it's been proofread by many people, and yeah. if there's a mistake, it would be corrected. Right. So uh, my basic knowledge comes from like uh, audiobooks. I can't fuck, I can't sit down to read. It's just it's hard. It's so hard. It's, it's so, so hard. hard. It used to be so. I used to read when I was a kid. I read like Harry yeah. Potter and Hunger mm -hmm. Games. But now, as an adult, I really have trouble sitting down for any book. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that comes down to. I mean, yeah, ADHD and focus. Smartphone. Smartphones. The smartphones have ruined us. I think smartphone is like you give a kilo of heroin to an addict. Mm -hmm. It just make their like a, their threshold higher and higher. It's like really toxic, especially like a, for example yeah. now I start to do content, but I I I prefer the long form than the short form. Yeah, I YouTube is my is my platform because I feel like on YouTube you can do lots of stuff, but it doesn't. There are some of them are like really fast paced. Yeah, but then on YouTube there are still lots of audience they. They enjoy the slow pace, like right. stuff, and I feel like that's more healthy for me. It's also more healthy for other people. Right. I think that like yes, you can do the fast pace and it's fun for, but if you just throw a person like that all day long, it's just so toxic. Yeah, it's hard, and it's like with TikTok and with Instagram, and you just like you're scrolling, and it's like you can't. There's nothing to latch on to anymore, yeah, yeah. right? And everyone's lying. Yeah. I know, like the the most, like uh, like people showing off online. Yeah. In in real life, they're miserable as fuck. Yeah. And the uh, happy people don't post on on Instagram. Exactly. So I I, I do. and I never check Instagram. Uh, for me, Instagram is work. Right. And I do it, but I don't consume anything. And I think that helps with That's so else. smart. But uh, on the other hand, also because I'm not a hot white woman. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm white, but I'm also Jewish, so it's like, yeah. you know, I'm like white with an asterisk. Yeah. <laughs> you are white uh, when you want. <laughs> I'm white when I want, but also like, if it was like, what I think about being Jewish is like... But do you really identify with uh, being Jewish? Mm -hmm. Is it... Uh, like for me, I'm Jewish before I'm American. Oh wow! Because American, I can always America is a country, right? But it's not it's not an ethnicity. Whereas Judaism is an ethno religion. So if I take a DNA test, it'll say a hundred percent or ninety nine percent really? Ashkenazi. It doesn't wow. say American. It doesn't say white. It doesn't say it says Jewish. Wow! Right? But they are from Jews. They are not. If they convert mm -hmm. religiously, like you can convert to the religion. Mm -hmm. But most most Jews, if you're not a convert, it's it's an ethno religion, so wow. it's in your blood. Mm -hmm. If you're a Mizrahi, mm -hmm. it means you're an African Jew. If you're a Sephardi, you're a Spanish Iberian Jew. But they are all genetically, like genetically, genetically. Wow, that's yeah, inside. Yeah, he, he, he said like what what Jew, Jewish really like a genetic thing or is because this group people they only fuck each other and over <laughs> the time they become a genetic thing. Kind of no, I mean so Judaism you know is the oldest religion, mm -hmm. right? And so if you go back, I don't know, Jews it's five thousand seven hundred eighty five years I think wow. is Judaism mm -hmm. is how far back that goes. 
and um, there were 13 tribes. So you do know, like with, in the Bible, um, you have um, Jacob, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I have nothing. I know nothing about those. Oh my god! So I'm, a, like I'm a plain a paper. <laughs> you can radicalize me on anything. <laughs> I'm easy. Uh, yeah, it's so you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, um, and like so, Abraham. There were like they they went into the different sects of of what happened, right? So Muslims came from Isaac, right? And something else. I don't know. One person. Yeah, so each each of these three, the bro these three brothers, they each created three different um, Abrahamic religions, one of which is Judaism. Mm -hmm. um, and so Jacob had thirteen sons. Do you know Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat? It's a musical, <laughs> but it's about uh, Jacob and his thirteen sons, and those thirteen sons created the thirteen tribes of Israel, which is what Judaism is. Yeah. And the for for like they are. For example, I know some uh, Jewish people. Yeah. They I culturally identify as a Jewish. Um, yeah. I mean, in your case, you see the cultural thing is a religion or is everything. Yeah, it's like cultural. It's like physical identity, and then it's like yeah, there's religion. But the religion to me is the least important part. Mm -hmm. But there are some traditions like I like Hanukkah, I like because that's like been passed down to me, and it's been passed mm -hmm. down from my parents, from my grandparents. And you start to, as you get older, kind of appreciate that, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and I think living in Spain, in Barcelona specifically, where Catalan culture has also been, because um, in, in Catalonia and Barcelona, they were forced to hide their, their culture, similar to Jews, like, everywhere. And um, it's made me really appreciate, like, having, having a culture and having a tradition that's not just, like, America, mm -hmm. you know. Why well, we talk about? It's like I don't know. Two ADHD talk to each other. Nobody knows. And then all of a sudden we end up on like yeah. Catalan culture. Uh, and you know, the other day I was talking with Jordan Gray. He he also has ADHD. Mm -hmm. And I was making a conclusion uh, thing for the end. And yeah. then half the end, I, like, I forgot why I said this. <laughs> <laughs> I was like. I was like, why I'm saying this, okay, I, I forget okay. that. Jordan was li is living with me for a bit, like in my apartment. Uh, now? Here? In Barcelona. Uh -huh. So he has my spare bedroom right now. It's been fun. I'll be like, hey, can you remember to do this? And he's like, I'll try to remember. And then the next day I'll ask him and I'll be like, he'll be like, oh yeah, you asked me yesterday. And I'll be like, oh yeah, I forgot that I asked you. <laughs> like, that's what it's like to live with each other. It's very funny. Yeah, and back to the ADHD thing. So... You you think your issue are coming from high undiagnosed ADHD? Yeah. But you've been treated as an anxiety or depression. Yeah, I've been treated for like as if I had anxiety slash depression. Like like the, like every therapist is like it's not severe enough for you to be like suit like on paper, mm. but it's severe enough for you to get medication and for you to need therapy. And I'm like. Maybe we just need to actually diagnose me mm -hmm. so that I don't have to keep paying for therapy every week, even mm -hmm. though therapy is important and you should go, mm -hmm. but you also need other tools and a diagnosis yeah. is one of them. Yeah. And how, what made you think actually your, your root issue is ADHD? Well, okay. So my mom, she said, and I say this in my show, she said that she thinks my whole life I've had ADHD and she said to deal with it because I would, I would get these bouts of like anxiety because I wouldn't know what to do with myself right or ADHD people like we don't get bored but we need to be constantly stimulated right and so she was like I would just put you I was in every after school activity I did gymnastics dance theater music um like other languages like I did everything after school and so my mom was like yeah I just did that because you had ADHD that's how you managed it and I was like well that's Maybe not the healthiest way of managing it. <laughs> um, you know, maybe get me medication next time, mommy. Uh, but I think her, her, I think her message is better than meditation. Medication. In many ways, I think for a kid especially, like yeah, yeah. because your brain is not developed. Also, the medication. If you read into the scientific papers, the research, there's really no no, no scientific proof is actually like. Working, yeah. Working or is beneficial. 
Yeah, yeah especially yeah. long term. They mm-hmm. don't really have much long term research on it. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And it's like actually, you're right. It was fair. It was like I think I wish I had a few more tools to deal with it. Yeah. But I think she did as well as she could. Yeah, I think that's for example what I remember this TED talk. I don't remember the name. I really this story really speak to me. And they talk about uh, there's a little girl. Mm-hmm. She's in school. She can't focus, and she has issue. They think that they uh, they have ADHD or something, and they uh, they send her to a, a therapist. And the therapist yeah. talk with the girl, and when she come b- back, the therapist said that she this girl has no issues. She she's just a dancer. So yeah. the, so they put this girl into a specific dance school, and she become a millionaire, like a running her own company and her own her own group of dance dance group. Wow. Yeah, I and uh, there are some books. I I think scientifically it's still not like not clear, but uh, there are lots of different ways of describe this thing. Like for example, there's a um a a a. A school of uh-huh. sorts that believe ADHD is not a disease, it's not a disorder, but it's a neurotype. Like dogs, yeah. when you like when you have the same litter of dogs, they all have different personalities, and exactly. they are exactly different. They are not the same dog, and uh, so how would you expect? Like we have, uh, like uh, tens of millions of people on us. How would you expect they all can sit on a table for eight, ten hours a day? Right. Yeah. The, this expectation is wrong, and uh, some uh, like uh, they they call ADHD as the hunter type. They say it's like uh, back when we are hunter uh, gathering t- time. Yeah. There are people who can focus more easily. They they can do do all those like uh, gathering. They can do uh, uh, like uh, some other stuff. But the hunters, they they can't focus all the time. But yeah. when they focus, they really, really focus. Good at it. Yeah. 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 Like you get in in some ways, there was um a couple on it. I watched the show Amazing Race, and there was a guy on it who talked about his ADHD. Amazing Race? Are you talking about your own race? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the Jewish race. Um, yeah, no, he um and he would talk about his um ADHD, and he was like, in some ways, it's a superpower because if I'm in the zone, I can focus. Yeah, and it it actually is, and I I agree with what you're saying about it being a neurotype yeah. because. A, everyone's like, um, what is it, neuro neurodivergent, right? Yeah. Everyone's neurodivergent now, mm-hmm. right? Who's neurotypical? There's no, yeah. like, what does neurotypical even mean, right? No, not everyone is. I mean, not everyone. Not everyone, everyone you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, because we're art, we're comedians and we're yeah. artists. We and are we're around this community. Kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and yeah. especially in the expat community, I think yeah. a lot of people are neurodivergent. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you're right. Not everyone is neurodivergent, but. I do think that kind of saying it's just a neurotype. It's mm. not a disorder. It's not an illness. Yeah. It's more so just there are different ways to manage it, and then mm. those don't necessarily yeah. fit into modern yeah society. And, yeah, I, and I also think like another metaphor I really really like is yeah. that it's it's not like ADHD is not a disease. Yeah, it's only a disease. Because the society is built against it. Exactly. Like it's like a, if I am a cactus, and they keep watering me and shouting at me, "What's wrong with you? Why are you dying? You have all the water you need, but I'm not a fucking flower. I don't need the water, and you are killing me. And it's yeah. not my fault. It's it's like the society, the environment don't recognize. Okay, there are different types of people out there. And it's not okay to have one standards on all, right? And uh, uh, because only one type can really benefit from this standard, everyone else will suffer because it's not built for them, right? It's just it's just not built, and it's built for people who like I don't know. We can't do. I don't know about you, but I when I was doing a sales job, I like wanted to die. Like that was when Me I too. was. That's when I um, got on my medication because I, I talked to a psychiatrist. I was like, I I can't function in this environment. I can't do a nine to five job. It's like, it, it makes me feel like my soul is dying. Like I said mm-hmm. that, which is so dramatic. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> like I had, I had jobs in the past. Yeah. And office work. I, 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 of course, lots of things in life was also not going great, but. 
I don't want to see any day I just want to kill myself because yeah. I can't focus every day I need to pretend I'm doing something but I'm not doing anything yeah and in the meetings I have no idea what people are talking about I can't <laughs> follow and it's just so horrible I, I just so feel hard. life is like like time is what form a life and all those hours are just pure misery yeah and you just think about that you're like all this time that I'm spending just doing this mindless miserable work I wasn't doing anything that's not doing like, anything right yeah, yeah, yeah. it just makes you and I think that's why so many like creative people are have like some form of ADHD or anxiety or something because it's like we we're like oh the world there's so much time like we don't have that much time in the world we have to make the best of it we have to do something that matters mm -hmm. even if the thing that matters is just making people laugh about butts you know yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but at least people laugh yeah. yeah, and the one I was the uh, one doing my office job, I just didn't find I was paid so well. Yeah, but I just don't find any meaning in it because I right. feel everyone around me is bullshitting. I am bullshitting. I feel nobody is understanding what they are doing, and I don't know if this thing is benefiting to anyone in this world. Exactly, and I am like. What's the point of everything? Yeah, and you but, start, yeah. yeah, you get very existential and mm -hmm. very like because I was um so I was selling restaurants, I was selling websites to restaurants. That was mm -hmm. my sales job, and it was during COVID, and I started selling online ordering, which restaurants needed, right? But at the same time, I was making money off of restaurants mm -hmm. that. It's um, been here. The light is better. No, the light light is better well, this way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, at the same time, I was like mm -hmm. making money off of restaurants that needed money. And yeah. so I was feeling this like extreme guilt. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, this is not, this doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. why, why am I wasting my time doing this? Why am I, I felt like I was stealing money. Did you go to college? Yeah. And what did you study? I studied educational theater. What? <laughs> <laughs> Why? Wow, well, well, not then, real makeup. So you are not mean to have an office job if you study that. Well, I studied that, right? So I didn't want to have an office job. Uh -huh. But my major, I felt like I left knowing half theater and half education and not being qualified to be a teacher or to do theater or to teach theater. And so, but that's what I wanted to do. Um, and the jobs that my major prepared, truly prepared me for would not pay enough yeah. to live in New York City. Yeah, yeah. Like for my case, I understand why I did the office job because I started business. Mm. So there's no choice. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, wow. So, so you quit your job? I quit my job. I became a writer. Was it hard for the transition? Yeah. I get you a woman. <laughs> get a new this. Look, I became a woman when I was 13. That's what we do in the Jewish religion. <laughs> really? Like, yeah. What do you do? Uh, we have a bat mitzvah. Do you know about the But they, they cut the foreskin. <laughs> yeah, but that's when you're a baby. <laughs> hey. hey. Well, during the podcast, uh, Donna is here. Hey. Why is he not on the podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Talking about cutting foreskins. Yeah, do exactly. you have mental illness? Hmm? Do you have mental illness? Mental illness? Yeah. That's what well, the podcast is about. Oh, uh, okay. No, my friend has one of those. I haven't gone to the doctors to get my diagnosed mental illness. What, oh. What's your diagnosis? Well, I'm fairly sure I'm all neurodiverse in some way. You met me? Yeah, have you met him? No. Yeah, he, he is a children's entertainer. You're a children's entertainer? Yes. That's yeah. crazy. Look how much he looks at the pillow guy. <laughs> <laughs> now he does That's a science great. show really funny. Yeah. Oh, cool. Wait, do you, know, um, do you know Ben Miller? He's a science comedian. I literally went to see Ben. So I know Ben from just uh, the Fringe for some reason, but yeah. he ended up doing show. I went to see his show Volcano the other day. Oh, what'd you think? Yeah, I liked it because uh, so his show is on at one. I yeah. cashed his mine, so therefore I only took two Wednesdays off, so the only day I could go and see him That's was so nice. last Wednesday, so I went to see him and stuff, and uh, it was fun, it's, it's certainly, because when I first met him, I was like, oh, I'd say his show is probably too science-y, and yeah. not comedy enough, 
but he's really good at balancing making like from dad jokes to actually kind of like oh i get that as a scientist yeah you know? yeah uh, but making it still i think relatively accessible as well and using powerpoints up because I, I i generally i do set up as well mm -hmm. but i don't really do much of it more anymore but i'm thinking like i would do a similar sort of I also want to do PowerPoint. Yeah, no, the other thing I was just saying so you need to do more shows. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just not doing enough. <laughs> because I think you know, if as long as you have at least one other space for one other comedy, like you take the other fourteen hundred ninety nine comedy shows, and then I do my children's show, and then it's still technically the fringe. That's perfect, yeah. You know what? I, I have seen you at PG Hits. I would have done a PG hit, uh, not here, but I would have done... In Brighton? Maybe I would have done a Brighton one, yeah, or I've last done year, shows yeah. in Australia if you've been... I haven't you know. been to Well, it might have been, maybe last year, yeah. I yeah, last year I was. Oh, maybe I'm not coming out what looks like a potato. <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Now, because you're live streaming, I'm not allowed to say what you look like, because then I get cancelled. <laughs> Oh, today I said a joke and the depression was yes. like the anxiety, nobody laughed. What? What was the joke? It's, a, it's a, like I have an actual comedian arrived. He's from India, so I need to find a way to introduce him. Because yeah. He's an actual uh, person. So I said, I said, oh, you, two, two, uh, good news, bad news, what do you want? I just said bad news. I said, oh, I have a comedian. He woke up this morning, he looked into his hands. He realized he's brown. <laughs> so he had a panic attack. <laughs> so you think that he laughed so hard, but nobody else. I laughed. think that's funny. Well, I, mean, I missed the first one. He 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 woke up this morning. So I uh, so he Sorry. he's an extra act on my show. I need to explain what's going yeah, yeah. on. So I said. Good news or bad news? Mm -hmm. uh, Obviously, said bad news. I said, oh, there's a comedian he woke up with a, with a, a panic attack because he looked into his hands and realized it's brown. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will, I will wait to see how the crowd reacts and then publicly I'll come out and go, I do not agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what I'm meant to do. 60% um, Sixty percent of so, the yeah. day's done. Fifteen yeah. down, ten more to go. Yeah. Nice. This is always this week where it goes from oh my god, oh god, it's forever. To in a few days we're like, oh, it's the last Monday. I know. Last Monday. Oh, oh, That's this so is my last true. Tuesday. You know, it goes from just oh my god, I can't wait this week to be over to oh, it's nearly over. I know this week was tough. This yes. is a tough week because this is the week where you really you feel like it should be the last week. And then it's not. <laughs> no, I feel last week is the hardest for me. Yeah. Yeah, because I had my uh, my free day on Tuesday. Yeah. So once Tuesday is done first, I'm relaxed and uh, refreshed. Yeah. But also once that day is done, it's half done. Yeah. So I, I feel I see hope again. Right. Hello. Well, that's how I feel. Uh, like, be so... careful. She's just come to start racially abusing you. Uh, <laughs> same things that you look like a potato. <laughs> so I can't remember what else she says. Chopping foreskins. That's what they were talking about. They were like, oh, oh, yeah. I, I forgot oh, about that. I don't know. I thought they were doing a cooking podcast. They're like, you come in. Yeah, you just cut the foreskin. Yeah, you, cut, you chop uh, the so foreskin. Like, oh, um, yeah. And then you, you dice up the balls. Yeah. Um, and then uh, this is how you destroy a man. <laughs> <laughs> No, just go up and go, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, are you, are you on as well? Yeah, I'm going to watch this uh, wrestling show. Mm -hmm. oh. Wrestling show? Yeah. Oh. It's like Nordic mythology and wrestling. It's very good. Oh, someone has a man. He's a man and all of them. Yeah, so weird. Is it on the man? He's very good. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yes, I love uh, that. Matt Watson literally just said to me, he goes, oh, uh, Barney, Someone he knows is in the show, or something, and he's going to go put a clash with his show. Uh, but he yeah. mentioned it's a Viking yeah, this is show or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. No, it's just wait just three years ago, he really likes it. Yeah, yeah, it's really, yeah. It's really good. fine. People are allowed to watch. Because he's very sexy. Yeah, who? The I show? Love, the love guy love in the show? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah. there are many guys. And they all like, uh, like, uh, do they look Viking? Are they blonde? Oh, yeah, they all blonde? have like six bags and stuff. And almost naked, touching each other. Oh yeah, yeah. there you go, <laughs> yeah. And then last time we had him back uh, with, with like a full hat on. Yeah. yeah, and he's like, put on this Viking hat. <laughs> <laughs> we had to fuck the pillow twice. Like, <laughs> I live with the car at home. Why, are you coming home late? 
Oh no, you need to go. Are you going back out as well? No, I stay. The yeah, yeah, but yeah, yeah, but you're going out later tonight. Yeah, but I don't hear me somewhere. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yes. I'll let you after you black widow. What am I doing tonight? I don't even know. Cool. Yeah, How right. do you keep track of the podcast? Right. Yeah, we're I still do doing the podcast, guys. Well, I want to make my pizza. I have to invite them to the bank with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a 915 show. And then I'm saying Stamp Town. What's that? Stamp Town? You pay for the show. You don't know Stamp Town? Honey, you have to learn Stamp Town. What's that? It's, um, oh my god, it's the most amazing. It's the, do you know, like, Zach Zucker? Or any of it. It's like an alt comedy cabaret variety clown. Uh, uh -huh. It's amazing. What time is it? Eleven fifteen. Oh, I might be able to see it. Yeah, eleven fifteen. See if it's not. I think. It's Are tonight. you going this tonight? Weekend. I'm going tonight. Uh huh. Do you have a ticket? I think it's sold out. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have. I have tickets. But, Such a show. Uh, yeah, it's sold out. You can't come. <laughs> you no, know what? A show also sold out. Black Widows. Okay. Black Widows is sold out. Uh, Black, Black Widow. Widow is, How's it been going? It's sold out almost every day, but right. it's not much achievement. It's 30 people room. And I know. And Loving Boss, they always have the most insane room count. Are you doing with Loving Boss? This year I'm with PBH. Uh, but do you recommend PBH? I like it. I like it. Uh, I, the Wee Blue book has really mm. gotten people in. Like, you mm. know the book that yeah, they yeah. are obsessed with? It actually works. Uh -huh. Like, I ha I've had a full room almost, like, at least. For my solo show. But I thought you can't do a reservation with that show. I can't have reservations, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is annoying. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, that's the toughest part. Mm. But I don't know. It's still like good. Like, um, you know, if you get the people, it doesn't really yeah, matter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I, I, uh, what I was, why I talk about. Yeah, I think it's like they have insane room count. Like, for example, the, I'm doing, you were there. I'm yeah. Like, what else? Such a small room, they say the capacity is 30. Yeah. And yesterday I had twenty less than twenty seven people. I yeah. had two people sit on the on the on the sound table. Yeah, this they like make it up. They're like it fits fifty, and really it fits thirty. Or it fits, and do you yeah. remember last year I did at the bar fifty? Yeah, yeah. And that, and that right. room was sixty people capacity, right? Right. This year they they switch the chair. Uh, instead of facing that way, not uh -huh. fa facing the left, oh, right? Why? And now they say it's eighty people capacity. Fucking insane. That's crazy. <laughs> that is insane. Yeah. How come you did it in City Cafe this year? They is wouldn't be there. I don't have any choice. No. Yeah. I know it sucks. I wish we had more choice in the venues. Like, especially when I'm doing it. Yeah. I know. I know. Well, I really want to do, like, so my show has musical comedy and, like, it's like I want it to feel more like a cabaret sort of, like, mm -hmm. show. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking at maybe voodoo rooms for next year because that's a really What's cool. That? It's in Newtown, but it's a really cool like cabaret type of venue. Which which uh, um, uh, organization is on? I think they have some with PBH and then some they just self produce. Oh, cool! Yeah. Which is interesting. They have their own maybe contact them because yeah. if if the sales produce probably you don't. On one hand, you don't you can sell tickets. On the other hand, it can't be in the blue box. I know. In the blue book. I know. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. We'll have to see. I'm gonna I'm gonna get a producer if I do it next year. Really? Yeah. You think it's worth it to get a producer? I think so. Cause um, personally, like I'm doing it all by myself. You do it all by yourself. If you hire a producer, what do you think? What job you will give to? What task? I think they deal with all the posters and the flyers, sourcing the venue, doing the p like contacting maybe some PR. And how much it costs you want to give them? I'd be down to give them fifty if they did if they did a lot of work, you know. Like I, I think a, a better way to do it is to just outsource all the the, the minimum, you think? which I'm doing now. Yeah, yeah, you have someone emailing. Yeah, 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 and uh, uh, all the sourcing stuff. You are the brain. You just yeah. tell them what to do, and they get all the the minimum down, and it's way cheaper than fifty percent. Yeah, and the same with fifty percent is. I mean, fifty is a lot, but it would probably be more like thirty, seventy, but. But they still need to uh, afford their accommodation and everything yeah. in here. And I, I think 50% is really tricky. Yeah. It's not only about the profit. From my experience with collaborating with people, yeah. when you do 50%, they have an illusion of you are equal. Right. They have an illusion that they deserve more. Yeah. But, uh, but, uh, and to be honest, even as a producer, can you, unless 
can you really able to bring someone who's experienced who has done this many years to know what to do most likely we still need to onboard someone and uh, you are still the brain yeah why not just hire someone who do the admin or that's true too i mean i don't know i just want to like get it off my get it off my chest right yeah like, yeah. like for this i could hire someone but like for this year like i hired an assistant yeah it's, it's also like i feel like adhd um, <laughs> The, the diagnose is big part of it. Yeah. It's not about the medi medication. For example, I I paid to get the diagnose because I want to try out the, the Adderall. But turns out Adderall right. is not illegal in Germany. Really? So they gave me something else and I really don't like what it. What did they give you? It's like like the same component but they don't really produce it's not when you yeah. take it it will your body will like make it into the same component. Right. But, it's, but it's not like meth. Yeah, but you, but it's like a slow releasing, mm -hmm. so you don't get it that high. Anyway, yeah. I don't like it. I don't like it. Yeah. So, um, but the diagnosis itself is big. Is because once you are diagnosed, you, oh, actually you also don't need it. But once you really learn, okay, this is ADHD. Yeah. Um. Then there are so many books and resources out there to really yeah. help you. Uh, and the, the I think the, the the toolbox is way more important than the medication because yes. the medication really there's no scientific support to it. If you look deeper on anxiety, uh, like a an anxiety, uh, like a, a depression medication, it's really by chance they want yeah. to, and nobody well, knows and why. They say that it's like medication doesn't solve anything, mm. right, or everything. What it does is it's it's like a crutch. It's like it mm. it helps. So it's like you still need the toolbox. Mm. You still need to do the other stuff. You know it, what? I think it's like that. It's like a, you have a pot of boiling water. Yeah. And it's going to like a uh, like a boil out, like a flow out. Mm -hmm. And uh, you you start to throw cold water in. Right. And it will get quiet for a while. And you can throw more cold water. But eventually you need to turn off the stove. Right. And uh, and uh, and also you like have so many good metaphors. I, I like metaphors because with a metaphor, I don't understand things. Mm -hmm. I need to find a metaphor to, yeah. for me to understand This things. is why you're good at comedy. <laughs> yeah. Because comedy is just all metaphors. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my titty is, is a metaphor for, for freedom. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever someone looks at it, they're like, ah, I taste the Liberty Bell. <laughs> Nobody said that. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. So I, for example, like uh, I, I read quite a few books. Uh, also, when I got diagnosed, that doctor also recommended me a book. So, uh, for example, there's this book called Faster Than Normal. Mm -hmm. He believes. Uh, he also doesn't believe ADHD is a disease. Mm -hmm. He believes it's a neural type, uh -huh. and he has a matter for this that uh, that uh, for people with ADHD, it's not like we're broken. Yeah, but deficit. It's not a deficit. It's an attention overload. Yeah. Yeah. It's like we have too much attention. We can't control it. It's not like we are broken, but it's like we are a, a Ferrari. We are yeah. the best race much. car right there. But yeah. uh, but the the world around us is a crowded market. Yeah. And we are not equipped with the right brakes. For sure. Like, do you ever notice? Like, I do this when I'm. Uh, when I, when I go to a new city or something, or if I'm in a new place, mm -hmm. I tend to actually get quieter because I'm just taking in everything that's happening around me. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, there's a building here, there's someone talking here, there's these people here, there's this food here, there's all of this stuff, and I just can't, like, someone's trying to have a conversation with me, and I'm just mm -hmm. like, I, no, no, no. Like, I'm, I just need to, like, look, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have that experience, but I get very um, overloaded. Oh, I don't have that experience because... Uh... I wasn't will travel unlike some white women. <laughs> okay, Miss <laughs> I live in Berlin. <laughs> but you know, you know, like uh, uh, this is actually something I want to explore more. Yeah. I think now I'm able to express I, I wasn't will travel, but uh, back then my pre comedy days, like then you meet so many normal people. Yeah. And those normal people are so boring. Every time we start a conversation, you start saying, hey, you have a nice titties. <laughs> Did you just get a transition surgery or something fun? They would always ask, oh, how's your family? I was like, yeah, good. I don't know. 
broken. <laughs> and they like, are you, are you, are you traveled? Where did you go? Not much place. Why? Poverty, why, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, like, and, and, and and now thinking back, I, back then of course I feel ashamed. I feel like a, uh, like the, this urge to to lie, uh, and I feel I have to hide it. Yeah. But now I looking back, I realize it's them being really rude and ignorant yeah. because they have a normal life and they assume everyone have that and they ask such of privileged questions. Oh yeah. Are you gonna have kids? Are you? Oh my god, that's the biggest one. Is like the kids question that everybody asks. But I think that one. Which is, it's different about do you want kids? That's a different question than like, oh, what are your plans for having kids? Mm -hmm. Like people sometimes so just boring. Assume. So boring. Yeah. 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 And 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 there was this uh, traveling question, and like yeah. now looking bad, I was like, this is so rude. Yeah. You can't assume everyone has money, and yeah. then when and you ask some question and. Uh, as a person, I didn't invite this. I have to answer. Like, and my answer, if I'm not well traveled, I have to answer in a way that uh, uh, now you are on top. Now right. you are like, a, I'm like, I'm not as good as you. And then what's worse is they would ask why. Right, and it's like, well, because I don't have money. Yeah, and uh, we are just having a friendly conversation. Why you have to call them me to a place? Yeah. So for me to admit, okay, you're richer, you're better, I, I don't have the privilege and I have to explain myself, put myself in shame. Yeah. And I, I feel that's, now looking that's back. That's so unfair. Yeah, now looking back, I just feel, oh, this is such ignorance. It is. Yeah. I think, like, well, how did you end up in Berlin? I I, I got my education in Netherlands, then nice. I uh, got my master in Germany, then I found an internship in Berlin. And I uh, just stayed. Nice. Uh, Berlin, Berlin really, really, I, I don't know, you know, I I said this many times, before comedy, I'm a different person. Yeah. Uh, unlike you, you are like the rich girl who can go to all kinds of activities <laughs> growing up. No. Yeah. But, but, but in my case, it's like a, we grew up with extreme poverty. Yeah. And the education is the only way uh, for me to change my life. And then I, I, my family really put out everything. My, my mom put out everything, like almost her life, to support yeah. this education. And then, but growing up, I just have the, like on one hand, like I just have this feeling that I'm, I really believe that I'm not smart. I believe that I'm stupid. No. I believe that I'm average. I believe that I'm like ordinary. So smart. Now, pre comedy time, pre comedy yeah. time is that. Like, uh, and uh, like, my mom told me, you are not talented, you are not creative, and uh, your only way out in life is through hard working. But uh, now looking back, I realized I was just permanently placed in a wrong environment. Yeah. Uh, I am a feisty person, but I will grow up in an environment that they, they, they really want to grow uh, obedient workers. Right. Uh, the, um, and you grew up in China. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on top of that, when you are from the bottom of the society, when you are from a broken home, when your mom is handicapped, when you are a girl, and this just like compound on it. And they, like, not only they expect everyone to be obedient, but you have to be extra obedient because yeah. all those things. And I just don't have that in me. Like, yeah. uh, I, like I, I spoke out and loud and I got like, so much attack and I was like bullied, beaten and like physically and by, by, the, by the teacher, like a, a mental torture, a public humiliation. I once got, um, I was once, there's one time they have this like a self-study hours, you just stand, stay in the uh, classroom, do your homework and there's a teacher on the uh, on on the stage and they just do their own thing and the yeah. whole classroom just do their own thing. And there's one time I really wanted to pee. Mm -hmm. But in China you can't go pee without the permission of the teacher. So insane. But everyone is study and is quiet and I try to indicate to the teacher she didn't look at me. Right. And I really really want to pee. So at the end I just sneak out from the back door and I want to pee. And when I back 
I realized the door is locked, then realized I'm gone and they locked the door, so forced me to go from the front door. And then she humiliated me in front of the whole classroom. And I have to write a public con oh uh, like a public uh, how do you say a uh, confrontation or no? Yeah, like a like a, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, like to blame myself, oh I'm wrong, I'm a bad person or whatever, to read it in front of the class. I refuse to do that. And they just attack me, they involve my family, my mom, who's living in like really, really far away and really, she's handicapped, she's really busy and they called her into school and to just like uh, ask her to stand without a chair and ask me to stand there for hours and hours, just come occasionally here at me and humiliate me, like this lasts for, for a whole day. and. Uh, uh, and they asked me to write this letter. I'm like, I'm not going to write it. It's not my fault. No. And uh, and at the end, my mom had to write that for me because there's no way around. Yeah, that's so crazy. I mean, it's just like it's one thing to grow up neurodivergent in in a capitalist America, right? Where it's like, you know, we complain about America, we complain about capitalism, but it's it's another thing to grow up in a world where it's like homogeny, like being the same is like that's what you're supposed to do. Like, yeah. I can't imagine. Yeah, that. and it's not even the same. I wish I was the same as other people, but it's like because of the discrimination, yeah. the uh, underprivileged, they, like, in the society, they don't think, okay, because you're underprivileged, we need to help you more. They say, right. because you're underprivileged, so everyone has step up, and you have no way to waste it. No one will help you. That's exactly what my teacher told me. That's crazy. And the growing up in an environment like that, and I never just feel I'm really smart at school. I am always in good schools. Yeah. I'm always in good class, but I'm always the average person. Sometimes I'm good, sometimes I'm average. Mm -hmm. I'm not, and this made me really believe that I'm just a hard worker. Like I'm not intelligent. And I just, I just tried to be normal for so, so long. Yeah. Then it's comedy made me realize, oh, actually, I, I have talent. Yeah. And then one the first time I did comedy, I just feel this energy all through me, and I feel like it's the first time I can breathe. Yeah. And it's just like magic the first time I did it. That's and then when I start to do comedy, it's just again and again I realize I'm not stupid. No. Like I'm not, You're not stupid. stupid at all. Yeah, but that's not these people. But I, I, I was like, if I can make this comedy work as a, as a career, yeah. while there are so many people, they can't manage it, and it's such a hard thing to do. It's one of the hardest career in the world, yeah. and I made it work. I must not be stupid. Yeah, you're not stupid. But 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 it's this is something new for me. Right. I only start to realize it slowly in the last six years. But um, when I when I had when I was in the normal environment trying to be a normal person. Yeah. Oh it was so hard. The university was so difficult. I always like on the edge of like failing the school and the, like deadlines can't manage it. Yeah, I, 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 I sit in a like, class I have no fucking idea what they're talking about. Same. Like I would doodle in class, like I would draw in class, and then teachers would be like, "Why, why are you doing?" It? But you need to. Like I needed to have a visual stimulant so that I could process what people were saying, oh. or else it just doesn't. Like it's just kind of like creepy. yeah, it's like what I said. That, like the world is not built for us. They assume you are the I like other people yeah. because like other people, their their bank work, like their their the capacity is so small. They can only do one thing, right. but our capacity is so big. And when we, we can't use that capacity, I can't focus on anything. I need right. to use it a little bit to so I can to to make to reduce the capacity so I can focus on the easier task. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I need I would need to like I would draw things or I would even like play games on my phone and I had a teacher yell at me and I was like Dude, I'm paying more attention when I'm playing a game on my phone than if I'm just sitting here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because otherwise my mind starts going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it's, it's actually really interesting. There's a thought I keep having and then it keeps escaping me. Um, oh, my God. Oh, just about, like, the the society that we're in, right? That we're, we're forced to kind of, like, fit into this 
you know, the education system isn't made for neurodivergent people. Yeah. Um, so I studied education, right? Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite classes was called Drama for Special Pops, Drama mm -hmm. for Special Populations. Mm -hmm. And the idea of it was how to teach theater to, um, it, was, I, it was technically like for special needs, right? Mm -hmm. But then the first day of class, I never forgot this, the teacher said every single person has some sort of special need, right? And not, we don't mean special needs in that term, but he means everyone has a different way of learning. Mm -hmm. Everyone has a different type of intelligence. Some people have physical intelligence. Mm -hmm. Some people learn better by using their hands. Mm -hmm. Some people learn better by, right? And so it was like, how can we adjust every single lesson that we teach mm -hmm. to accommodate people who have different styles mm -hmm. of learning? A kid with ADHD might not be a really good test taker, but they might have, they might be amazing at, at doing presentations, right? Or mm. something, right? Because we're, we're very charismatic, right? Child oh, I'm not, I'm not. You're I'm so not, charismatic. No, I'm not. <laughs> You're the most charismatic. Uh, oh, American women lie. <laughs> <laughs> they are good at lying and bitching at your back. No, 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 <laughs> I'm just flirting, money. Um, I know how to flirt. Um, I've had to learn, I've had to charm my way through. Um, but yeah, it's just it's just about like the way that we've been taught for so long, and I think at least in America it's changing. But obviously, I'm I'm pretty sure places like China have a long way to go, because the way that you were teaching was okay. Everyone sits down, everyone takes a test, and if you do well on that test, then you're smart. If you do bad, then you're dumb. But that's just not true. Mm -hmm. That's just not, you could be great at taking tests and yeah. be completely could be an idiot at other things. You know, I I think it's also the normal people that live in a tunnel view. Yeah. For example, when I tried to be normal, I was in business school, and at that moment, I really believed the fancier a job you are, the more intelligent you are. Yeah. And I, I really believe those people who work in supermarket, they are stupid people. I really believe so. I did too, yeah. growing up. Yeah. yeah. Because and, that's what we're taught. Yeah, and then you go to comedy, you have people who work as janitor, and that's the most insane comedy they do. They blow yeah. your mind, you are like... This is intelligence. Yeah. And uh, and then by comedy, I really learned like, okay, education really don't mean much. It doesn't mean anything. Well, my, my thing, I was a bartender for a long time, right? So I, I did, I studied education. I was a teacher for a year and then I went back to the States and became a bartender. And it was the smartest job I could have done. Mm -hmm. I made more money than my friends. I didn't have to fuck. Being a bartender, great for ADHD people. Like, so great. Because you're doing so many things at once, right? You're uh -huh. making drinks, you're talking to but people. But don't you see it sometimes you're overloaded, you're like, I can't do the work. Every it. so often, but it's kind of like... I'm thinking maybe I also have a little bit of autistic uh, component in yeah. it. Because Impossible. sometimes I'm like, ah, I'm like, I'm just shut down. Yeah, it's like, totally, I think bartending, not great if you're autistic. Because you have to <laughs> talk to people a lot. Yeah. And, but I think if you have ADHD, it's awesome because it, yeah you can get overloaded mm -hmm. but I go in the zone mm -hmm. I go in I'm like oh Super Bowl Sunday mm -hmm. let's go and mm -hmm. I'm just I don't like um, and you, do you get this uh, excitement yeah and I'm just like making drinks and everyone's giving me money like it's just instant validation dopamine hits you get tips 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 right also because those tips tips to, I know I would wear stuff like this and be like oh my god you guys <laughs> I had a trick um because we had the refrigerators mm -hmm. so it was a big bar and um when ever someone would ask for something from the bottom shelf I would just like bend over and show them my butt <laughs> I, would like, I would bend and snap for real <laughs> like, oh, here's your beer ten dollar tip thank you <laughs> Like use use your hotness, you yeah. know. Like you got, if 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 people are gonna call us stupid or you know call you anything else, be like, I'm not an idiot. I'm a hot. I'm a hot smarty, and yeah. I'm tricking you into giving me more money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, yeah, Marcia show off of her beauty. No, no, no. Oh. Um, I'm not showing this to anyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, 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 what I was talking. Do you feel you get in the zone? Uh, like now in your daily life, uh, do you get into Zoom easily? Is how's like how's comedy work with the Zoom? 
Yeah, it's a good question. Um, because with comedy, I think it's actually it's a tough job to. Do I need to be here? With comedy, it's a tough job to get in the zone. You see, she's even squeezing her titties to the screen. No, <laughs> I was cold. Maybe I should put my shirt back on. Oh, no, 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 no. I was, I was warm. It's today's weather is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, comedy, I think, is tough to get in the zone because you can be in it, and then someone says something and it pulls you right out, and it's really. Um, or you can just be firing on all cylinders and some, oh. some shows, I, I'm sure you have this, some shows you're like, bam, 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 I'm on it, I'm on it, every single moment, oh, great. That's not the you perform on the Black Widows, that's yeah. the worst Black, Black Widows ever, <laughs> because I, I forgot to text you, I forgot to text you, At, you know, Sophia yeah. May, she didn't even get a chuckle. And then oh, later I realized yeah. why. I realized why. Because there's a, a few bitches on the corner. Yeah. They have such bad vibes. They suck everyone's energy. Uh, people on the front, at the end, they want to laugh. But they're like, yeah. bitch, guys just kill everyone's vibe. You know what happened? Like, it was bad. Like, I was getting, like, lit, fewer laughs than normal. Yeah. Like, you, you've seen me perform so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. And, and I use my best uh, material. Nobody laughed. Yeah. And then then at one point, uh, well, the one of the bitches they were like, I don't like pedophiles. And I'm like, I also don't like pedophiles. Yeah. And yeah. Everyone laughed. <laughs> and then they said, Oh, oh, I don't like pedophile. Pedophile is not funny. I'm like, pedophile is very funny. <laughs> and I don't like pedophile jokes. I'm like, you know who don't like pedophile jokes? Pedophile. Yes. And then we were like just playing game with the men. Yeah. We like, oh, men suck. Men suck. And they were having fun. And those bitches, they were like, I like men. Okay, men don't like you. You <laughs> pussy look dry, okay? Of course I didn't say that. <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure it does. That, um, that's the good thing about a comedian. Even when you are pussy, you don't... Uh, uh, have the courage to speak up. You always can make it up in the jokes. It's so true. Yeah. It's so true. Like I love. Oh my god, I can't even remember. Like this is the worst. Is when you're when you're in that zone, and then I don't remember any of it later because I'm like, wow, I was so good at that crowd work, and then I just totally forgot it. Like mm -hmm. the next day. But I had. Uh, I don't remember. But it was there was a really funny. I had some really funny crowd work moments. Um, in the last couple of That's days. That's why you like, need to record it. I know. Yeah. I mean, I, the thing is, sometimes I record, but then I just never watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also don't uh, watch it, but now I just put it everything online. You do? So indiscriminately. Oh my god. <laughs> because you don't know. There are so many perverts online. You don't know who will <laughs> like it. I, I mean, like, it's gotta find the right For example, I'm like recording 12 hours a day, not really 12 hours. Yeah. But, uh, but, and, um, I know I will never watch it, but uh, at the same is it's uh, it's Someone internet. Like... There are people on the internet watching people sleep. There are people on the internet watching people eat. That's so true. you never know. I like, just know. keep doing this. Maybe you found your group you of You might have. <laughs> you might have like one creepy fan that just watches every single thing you put out. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, they're yeah. like, I just love Monique. Mm. I just follow everything Monique does. Like, I think it also could be one day I pick up. Yeah. And people start to watch said shit in it. Yeah, they go. And they realize something offensive and then it get controversy and then I get super famous. It could happen. <laughs> it could happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could be like the Chinese. Oh, you know, yesterday I almost got a racial assault. No. And no. but that's the only time my camera wasn't on. I was so no. mad. I was like, that's ah, a dream. That was more than a decade. Finally, <laughs> the Chloe thing I had on racial crime and I didn't know what. Oh, record. yeah, like I recorded the racism. Uh, like, that's what you need. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I will. I, I can pre I can attack you if you hire me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Should I be racist on camera with that hole? <laughs> anyway, what are we talking about? Yeah, so what do you think about the Zoom and the, your daily work? Because for me, like uh, now, I have kind of an ex existential crisis before yeah. I come to French because. Uh, I slowly made a decision. I, I decided I can't do comedy like a normal comedians anymore. Mm -hmm. I can't go out six nights a week. Yeah. I, 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 I can do maybe like four, four yeah. or three, four nights a week. But, yeah. but I can't do six nights because like I have my daily routine. I have the sense of mental health and all mm -hmm. the things. And once it's finished, it's already 2 p.m. 
and then I need to leave the house at six. I can't get anything done, right. and that creates so much stress, anxiety, and and it's really really stressful. When I work, I have to work ten hours. I can't. Yeah. I need to leave the the day open. I can't just work two hours and get up do something else. I can't do it. Yeah, I have the same sort of thing where so my job, I get paid per article now. Which is good and bad, right? Because as a freelancer, it's, it's nice to be my own boss and I don't have to be on anyone else's hours. But what's bad is that sometimes, let's say I'll, I will decide in advance that I'm going to do four articles in a day for my job. And um, sometimes it'll take me a half hour to write an article. Sometimes it will take me three hours. It just depends on my day You mind. should get on cloud. I know, I need to. I need to I need <coughs> yeah, people to. have such like... Like those people who don't know AI, they hate AI so much. I don't hate it. I yeah. just I'm not, I don't mean you. Yeah. I mean there are lots of haters out there who hate AI. But it's really no difficult, different than internet, than yeah. email, than than yeah. It's a and people it's a tool. Be, yeah people believe oh you use AI you cheat, but that's not true. Mihai wrote yeah. his whole, uh, Mihai wrote his whole children show with. AI. Really? And the people think, oh, this is low budget, this is cheating. But no, it's not like he press a button and the show come out. Yeah. He worked every day for 10 hours for a whole month. Right. Like, it's, it's a tool. It's like a paint. Yeah. You need to learn how to use this paint. Right. But once you learn how to use it, yeah. then you can make more. You can do yeah, more you can do better stuff. Yeah. But, and I don't think it's cheating because... I don't, for example, now I use different AIs. Yeah. I have AI to uh, research, do research. I have AI which do more creative work. Right. And I have AI which uh, create uh, uh, music, AI which create uh, like images. Cool. And I don't think this is cheating because how come some people can believe it's fair that some company some media company, they have a CEO and they have a team of different people doing other functions. They think that's fine, but right. they think it's not fine that I have uh, a team of AI doing different functionals for me. Right, and you still have to know how to direct them, you have to yeah. know how to use it, you yeah. have to, when it gives you that product, know how to edit it, you yeah. have to, you yeah. know, it's still an intelligent I, I feel product. like I, I'm like a director. Yeah. An orchestra. And honestly, like yeah. probably the best thing for freelancers is AI. Yeah. Oh. So I should be using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I need to. I need Wait, to get so, um, so last thing, last thing before yeah. we go. Um, the potato come back to pick up his fake potato. Um, and he's not uh, attacking me back because it's on camera. But, uh, <laughs> but say something mean about me, Donna. Um. He's too nice, he can't No, no, he's not nice at all, no. I have so many to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say something really mean. Um, I'm going to wait until five minutes before your podcast finishes, and then I'm going to get up slowly, cause a problem, and not donate. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Did this happen to you? It hasn't happened to me yet. You, you know, the other day I had a bitch, she come to my show, I told everyone they can leave if yeah. they want, because... My show is at midday, uh, okay. and uh, me, like uh, I do that comedy, midday, yeah. that comedy is not uh, the, it's the... not correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I told them, if you want to leave, you can leave. Yeah. Uh, and this bitch stayed for 45 minutes, and then she got up slowly, and she started to pack her bag, took her time, like slowly, slowly. Everyone was looking at her. Girl. She just took her time, took her time, no. took her time, not making any eye contact, and I started to address her on stage. She doesn't react to me, she just took her time, take her time, oh take her time. God, no. Then slowly walk out and close the door. It took at least five minutes. That's and insane. it fucked up my whole momentum and the, the show started strong and did bad. Yeah, because she fucked it. Like yeah, yeah. if you're gonna leave, like just do it. Don't like fucking take your yeah, damn there are time. Some people like they're just so not like mindful or yeah. sympathetic. Um so my last question, my last question yeah. for you is, do you feel uh, as a, a person, you believe you have ADHD, do you think, oh, before that, I want to add another sentence okay. to this. You said you are undiagnosed ADHD. Yeah. I think the diagnosis is important also so. because it's like, I feel like there are so many people out there gaslighting me. 
yeah i well i believe i believe so strong i have adhd and everyone said if you are not diagnosed you can't do this uh they yeah. gaslight yeah. me i know i said bitch i know i have it and don't treat me as crazy i don't yeah. get it's so you, frustrating like yeah. people and i know i just need to get the diagnosis mm -hmm. to deal with that and i know i have it so it's like you know, Mara's boyfriend has it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Probably you can come back home, she can find someone. Well, there. I have, and she's not, she and someone else gave me a, there's a psychiatrist in Barcelona who's dealt with basically every girl in this group. Mm -hmm. And um, they've, one of my friends took a test and she said that she has ADHD, but she developed a form of, by taking the test, they found that she developed a form of OCD to manage some of the ADHD symptoms. Mm -hmm. And it actually very, it sounded very similar to me because like, mm -hmm. Sometimes when I would be bartending, mm -hmm. I would be like, okay, but the glasses need to be stacked this way. And anyone who's stacking it like wrong, it like upsets me. I'm like, it can't. I think I also have a little bit. I'm not sure if it's OCD or I, actually I'm right. Yeah. But when I manage your show, yeah, when I manage your show, I really feel I'm like, like, yeah, maybe I should everything be, needs to be done yeah. just right. Yeah, like, yeah, in yeah. The right way. Like, I don't know if it's OCD. I'm but. so uh, like care, carefree. I'm like yeah. so clumsy. But when I manage a show, my attention is like on all the details. I, I really, I'm really a good, very yeah. good producer. And you and, are a good producer. And and then, like I have some beliefs. I really believe if I do that, the show will be better. But right. I don't know if it's OCD or I'm right. I'm just right. figuring it out. I think you're fine. <laughs> um, there's nothing wrong with you. Um, yeah. I'm just gonna gaslight you. <laughs> no, I think the uh, the gaslighting thing is like. I, I feel like to just, it's not, I, I, I really know I have ADHD, but yeah. getting the diagnosis to shut everyone else up. It's Be, so nice. Because yeah. they keep saying you, you don't know, you're not sure, yeah, yeah. and they were like, I mean, bitch, I know about me, because like, the, the I have such a long history of mental illness, the, the doctors, they try to diagnose me many different things. Yeah. And it's not like I, I say, yes, yes, yes. I really like it. For example, the bipolar two thing. He tried to diagnose me for two years. I said, yeah. I don't have it, bitch. Right. Mm. No, but because a lot of times people think that people with ADHD, mm. they think it could be bipolar, right? Because you have really high highs and mm. really low lows, right? Mm. But the difference is we don't have like weeks long mania. You know, like if if mm. if we have a high, it's like I feel really good after doing this thing. It's like hyper focus. Yeah. yeah, and it's, it's like not a a manic. I, I, I tell the difference because I have both. <laughs> and, the, and the ADHD thing is really, really uh, pleasant. But with the manic face, you just spend so yeah. much money. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, I bought this camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great camera, though. It's yeah, amazing. Yeah. I think it's the best camera for comedians, for sure. Yeah, it Because it performs too. really uh, well in low light. And the, the tripod is so light. And like for example, I have this expensive uh, DSLR uh, fancy camera, yeah. and I have fancy uh, tripod, but I touch it twice because yeah. they're so heavy and it takes ages for me to put it up, and I'm like I just don't bother. But this thing is already on the tripod, and uh, I just it's so easy and uh, it works really well in low light. It also follows you around. Yeah. It's yeah. nice. I like it. I might ask you for a link for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and uh, one last thing I want to ask yeah. you. Do you feel as a person with ADHD at fringe, do you feel you are you are fulfilling like you are like on top of things? Do you feel you are getting into the zone? Do you think you are like a, a realizing your potential skill? Yeah, a little bit. Mm -hmm. It depends. So last year I really felt that. Last year I was like, this is like I love the fringe, like show, show, show. It's just shows all the time, people all the time, like this is the best, right? Yeah. This year a, as I've, I've kind of recognized it, that my ADHD more, like especially in the last year, I've started talking about it on stage, I've started like finding ways to manage it. This year I'm being really like mindful to give myself time to separate. Oh, you know what? Next year maybe we can do an ADHD show. We should do you know what they do is, if you work with PBS, you can't work with laughing I know. And what they do is they have, uh, like some comedians, they work as a group. And they have a few people like Regis with PBH, a few Regis with Laughing Horse. Yeah. But actually, they do all the shows together. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, like, uh, I I think, yeah, maybe we can talk next maybe year. Maybe we can do something like that. Yeah. That would be awesome. Because yeah. it's like, 
It would be the most disorganized show ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, we hire our assistants. Yeah, we'll use it. We'll use AI. We'll get an assistant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be fine. Yeah. But it's like it's such a thing that. But this year, I'm really like prioritizing my health and saying I need sleep. I need to make sure like I'm sleeping pretty late each day instead of flyering. But you know what? It's not that big of a deal. A lot of my shows have been selling, so it doesn't matter that much. And、um, flyering is really bad ways of using your time. I yeah. I I, I don't do flyering. For me, it works、mm. because I sit down with people and I talk to them and I get to yeah, know them. Yes, but if you think about that, there's also like opportunity cost. Like、yeah. uh, for example, lots of artists they fly there for two two hours、yeah. for their show and it's packed. I was like, I would rather to have a half an empty show, but I do three shows. Yeah, I I I would rather I I yeah. In total, I get a, almost the same people, but I have three times stage time. Yeah, I have more practice, and those people are there. They actually want to see the show. That's for, true. For me, also for me, it also could be like a because I was rejected my whole life. Right. So I really don't like rejection, uh, and uh, so. I just don't want to give people an opportunity to reject me. I think that's also. I、amazing. understand that for、mm. sure. I mean, I grew up doing theater, so、mm. I got rejected a lot. Like、mm. we did a lot of, and also from family and all of that. But、um, the most obvious examples were like I would audition for shows,、mm. I would get rejected, and I would cry. I would be doing、yeah. like my mom had to really learn how to、mm. teach me. Like you, you're gonna get rejected.、Mm-hmm. And I,、um, but so now I'm better at handling rejection just because I have for so much,、mm-hmm. and I have to learn how to handle it. I want to share you. Do you have time? Are you running? Are、uh, you running、okay. really late? Yeah, I might have to go soon. Okay, okay.、Uh, so one last. I said that many times. That's okay. Yeah. A, so I run into something a few days ago really bothers me. Yeah.、Uh, what it is like? I was at the, the park、uh-huh. doing the podcast. Uh, and I was looking for the podcast guest,、uh-huh. uh, and I was shouting, "Hey, Adam, Adam!" And the,、uh, and then a guy said, uh, uh, "What are you looking for?" I said, "Podcast."、Uh, I said, "Are you Adam?" He said, "No." He said, "But I can talk. You can interview me." I was like,、oh, "Okay, I go look for Adam." So I look for Adam. Then、yeah. I check the phone. Turns out Adam is not coming. So I turn back to the guy. I said. Adam is not coming. You want to do the podcast? <laughs> and he said sure. And they ca- he came to me, and I was like, oh, this is the most strange thing you can do, like a、yeah. random reaction, and you have a conversation, you interview them, and then suddenly the guys start to ask me, oh, what's your podcast about? I said mental health, but you don't have to do that because I just yeah, run to I you. I just can inter- interview you as a, like a strange interaction, and he said. Oh, what's your podcast? The name is, and I told him the name. Then he started to Google me in front of my face. That's so weird. And then I, he said, "Oh, it's the wrong name. I don't find it on Spotify." And suddenly I just feel so negative. And I said, "You know what? I, I actually my voice is not doing great. I'm happy to take a break. It、yeah. would be fun if two person、uh, randomly or doing this fringe thing." But、uh, it's only fun if two people are both really spontaneous and、yeah. into it. And, right.、Uh, if you're like, let me look you up first. Yeah. yeah. It's like, come on, dude. Like, just just have a conversation with a person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then then I just feel so negative. Then I kind of said I don't want to do it. Yeah. And he、you. wouldn't leave. He just stay there, talk, talk. And then after quite a while, he finally left me alone on the park in the park. And then I just didn't understand what's going on. I feel、yeah. so negative. Then later I smoke weed. Then I realize what happened. Okay, weed also is so helpful. Helpful, yeah. So helpful. Yeah, yeah. Because I feel like normal people when they are high, they are stoned. But when I'm high, I can focus. Yeah, I'm funnier when I'm high sometimes.、Uh, yeah. Honestly, I don't really perform high, but every so often, but I'm just funnier in conversation. But even like, doing like a, the main work, it really、oh, helps me. I work. I can、yeah. work. Yeah, because like I feel my brain is too fast. It wants、yeah. you to slow down in order to do the normal task. Exactly,、task. like oh, I can think of the words because、yeah. it's not it's not going faster than my like I'm a fast typer, which helps.、Mm-hmm. But like when I smoke, I wrote reviews last night. I、mm-hmm. I、uh, I didn't smoke. I had edibles,、mm-hmm. cleaned my room, and wrote some reviews. Ah,、uh, yeah. Okay, we'll talk. Ah,、uh, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll talk. Uh, be- because uh, like uh, uh, Jordan showed up, showing off, but I said, "Do you have?" He said, "Two." I said, "Shut up."
I don't really have much. I tried to make edibles here, but the oven doesn't really work. It just turned brown, and I didn't get high. Anyway, anyway. So the later I smoke weed, I finally realized what happened. Um, which is I realized is this is a friendly interaction. It's very spontaneous. Yeah. And it's fun because it's spontaneous. But I didn't invite this guy to judge me. Right. And you offered it first. He then, offered it and then he judged you. Yeah, then he judged me in front of my face. Right. I didn't wait for him to make a decision because I don't want. Because you don't have... I didn't invite you to do that. Yeah. I didn't give you this power over me. Right. And, and I, I didn't ask for it. He just took it. Yeah, and I... how just men though. I just feel it's so rude. Like, how, what do you think you, you can just judge me on my face? And the, then by something you Google on a phone, then decide if I'm worth it. Yeah, no. Instead of just talking with this person in front of you. Very stupid. Yeah. And Not I, worth it. And I feel it's something about rejection. Yeah, it's a, it definitely comes from rejection, but it's also like this sort of male gaslighting thing. Mm -hmm. Like, men just feel that they have a power over women, mm -hmm. and they don't really understand how that can come off to a woman when it's just like, well, let me, I don't trust your authority, right? Mm -hmm. You're saying I have a podcast and he's saying, I don't, I don't trust that. Let me look it up. Mm -hmm. That's, he's mm -hmm. gaslighting you. Yeah. And I was like, does it matter? We are two yeah. friendly people meet in a park. You asked me to interview you. I said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, uh, anyway, it is what it is. And I'm quite proud that like before he made that decision, I yeah. cut it off saying, I don't want to interview you. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. Cool. Awesome. That's the end of it. That's Thank it. you very much. Bye, baby. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.